Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Zayman Nazir and welcome back to Knowledge Realm. Today we are going to study Lecture 6 of Pakistan Affairs course for CSS examination. We are going to study Educational Movement in Subcontinent by Muslim Leaders. So we would be studying all the educational movements in detail started by the Muslim leaders in subcontinent for the betterment and for renaissance of Muslims of subcontinent. The source of the material that I'm going to explain here today is the very famous book for pre-partition history of Pakistan that is Track to Pakistan by Ahmed Said. This book is very important for CSS aspirants, very interesting and also recommended by FPSC and um, I've read this book in much detail and whatever I'm going to explain here today would be from this book. So all the CSS aspirants especially and all other students also kindly pay attention, concentrate and let's get started. So here is the list of the contents, uh, all the educational movements that we're going to study today. We're going to start with Aligarh movement started by Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan and uh, then Darul Uloom Deoban, Nadwatul Ulema, Anjuman Himayat Islam and Islamia College Peshawar. We're going to study all these educational movements and um, educational institutions in much detail today. So we would start with Aligarh movement, that is the movement of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. And first of all, we'd be studying the background of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was actually from Delhi. He was born in Delhi and he was from elite class. His family was very influential and was associated with Mughal code. His grandfather was awarded with the title of Jawad al He was associated with Mughal court and his father was also associated with Mughal court. So Sir Sayyid belonged to an influential family in Delhi. Sir Sayyid learned Quran at a very early age and he was an educated person and uh, scholars write in the accounts that in the education and development of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan the mother of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, Azimun Nasa Begum, had a very great and influential role. So here I would like to share an incident that I read in the book Track to Pakistan by Ahmad Said that reveals the high moral standards of Azimun Nasa Begum. What happened? Once Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan slapped one of his servants when he was a kid. So to make Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan learn a lesson, Azimun Nasa Begum banished him from the house and she did not allow him inside the house until he apologized from the servant. So this was, this was the way to teach Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan the respect of elders. This is how she taught Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan how to respect the elders and how and not misbehave with the elders. It shows that how high the moral standards of this lady were. It shows that uh, what was the role of the mother of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan in his development, in, in his brought up. This is how he was brought up. This is how he was raised in his house. And it shows that uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan grew up to be a person of moral standards, of high moral standards. His mother was the reason behind his strong and good character. So this was the background of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. Now let's study his movement. So before starting the Aligarh movement and the efforts of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan for the revival of Muslims, I think first we should study the background of the society at the time. We should study uh, what were the problems and what was the situation of Muslims at the time that caused Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, that made Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan start this movement. So we would study the background of the society first. War of Independence was lost by Hindus and Muslims. Collectively, we can call them Indians. And uh, Britishers won the war. And India was finally under the strong and complete hold of British after the 
decline of Mughal Empire. Mughal Empire was also crushed after the War of Independence and India was now under the rule of British. Then British started a new tactic that is divide and rule. British divided Hindus and Muslims and they started maligning history. But why they did so? What was the goal that they wanted to achieve through this divide and rule strategy? There were definitely reasons behind, behind this strategy. Actually, British knew that they had snatched the rule from Muslims. And it were the Muslims that were ruling before British in India. So they knew that they had done great damage to Muslims of subcontinent and not the Hindus. I mean, Hindus were in the similar condition before the decline of Mughal Empire and after the, de the decline of Mughal Empire also under the British Empire also. But it were the Muslims whose status was completely changed before Britishers. They were emperor, they were ruler, but after the arrival of British in India and after the decline of Mughal Empire, they were oppressed and they were just local people ruled by some foreign invaders. But before that, they were rulers. So Britishers knew that the people who were in pain, who were in agony at the time, who were agitated are Muslims. So to prevent the revival of Muslims, they tried to oppress Muslims as much as possible because they did not want Muslims to rise again and to snatch back the rule from Britishers. So they tried to isolate Muslims in the society. They tried to oppress Muslims in the society as much as possible. They tried to suppress Muslims and they did so by maligning the history, by dividing Hindus and Muslims. They presented Muslims as oppressors and they presented Hindus as oppressed in the 350 years of Mughal Empire in the history. This is how they maligned history. Muslims were oppressed socially, politically and economically by British and Hindus also. They were isolated in India. They were the special targets of Britishers. Britishers could not allow Muslims in any case to revive again and snatch back the rule from Britishers. And this is the reason they were accused of masterminding the war of independence. Britishers accused Muslims of masterminding the war of independence because they knew that the rulers before, before Britishers were Muslims. And they thought that it were the Muslims who started this war of independence and wanted to take back the rule from Britishers. So they just tried to oppress Muslims in every possible way. Britishers and Hindus nourished animosity for Muslims and Britishers instilled hatred in the minds and hearts of Muslims, uh, in the minds and hearts of Hindus against Muslims. A very interesting quote that I've added here from the book Trek to Pakistan. James Broadwood Lyle wrote to his father in 1858. He's saying that, now just, just try to understand and feel the hatred in the hearts of Britishers against Muslims. What this person is saying, he's saying that if the Muslims could by any means be entirely exterminated. It could be the greatest possible step towards civilizing and Christianizing Hindustan. This is what they used to think about Muslims of India. This is how they used to feel about Muslims of India. They just wanted to get rid of Muslims in India. This was the situation of subcontinent at the time. This was the situation of Muslims of subcontinent at the time. Some Muslims were dead shot by Britishers. And to add insult to injury, Muslims were uneducated and incompetent. So they could not do anything to defend themselves. So this was the background of the society that made Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan start his movement. 
Sir Syed Ahmed Khan was in agony at the time, seeing the situation of Muslims of subcontinent at the time. So this was the background of the society. So now we're going to study the services of uh, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan for the people of India, for the Muslims of India. And um, whenever Aligarh movement is discussed and talked about, it is generally believed that Sir Syed Ahmed Khan only established uh, some schools in Aligarh and this is his movement. But no, this is not the complete truth at all. Uh, in addition to establishing many schools, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan did uh, a lot more and um, he wrote many books and organizations. He did many pol political efforts and uh, he did a lot for the betterment of Muslims of India. So we're going to study all the services of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan uh, written by Ahmed Said in his book Track to Pakistan. We're going to study all the services. So first of all, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan wrote many books and he established many organizations. He wrote Jila al Qulub Bazikr al-Mahboob in 1842. This was a book, a short biography of our prophet, beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa Then in 1857, his very interesting work, The Causes of Indian Revolt. Sir Syed Ahmed Khan wrote The Causes of Indian Revolt and in this short booklet, uh, he tried to explain to the British government the real causes of Indian revolt. This is a very interesting booklet and um, after this booklet, Britishers actually understood the reasons behind the Indian revolt and uh, he said that uh, this was not a mutiny but a revolt. Uh, this is a very interesting book and we would discuss this in future. Uh, moreover, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan wrote Loyal Mohammedans of India in 1860. It was in support of uh, Mohammedans, that is Muslims. Then Sir Syed Ahmed Khan wrote khutbat e ahmadiyya khutbat e ahmadiyya is a very interesting book for the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. It was actually... Uh, retaliation and answer to the book life of muhammad life of muhammad was actually a book written by william muir and in the book life of muhammad this person william muir questioned the life of a beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he wrote many blasphemous and uh, many things that uh, were not liked by Muslims of that time. So Sir Syed Ahmed Khan came forward and he wrote a very comprehensive book in answer to this person, William Moir. This was Khutbat Ahmadiyya. Then he established Scientific Society in 1864. This society was for the betterment of Muslims of India and its work was to translate the English books in Urdu so that Muslims of India could understand the books. This was a very great step, a very good organization established by Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Then he wrote a magazine, Tehzeeb al-Akhlaq. This magazine was for Muslims of India and the main aim of this magazine was to teach Muslims manners and to, to prevent Muslims from misdemeanors. Uh, a quote by Sir Syed Ahmed Khan that I have added here. What What is he saying? He's saying that the purpose of this magazine is to motivate Muslims to acquire civilization to its perfection, to neutralize the hatred with which civilized nations view them so that they may be regarded as respectable civilized nation. Now, reading this quote, you can make an idea, you can imagine that all the efforts of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan were determined, were dedicated to neutralize the hatred in the hearts of non-Muslims for Muslims. He just wanted to refute all the allegations, all the accusations on Muslims. He just wanted to make a good image of Muslims in India and in the world. He just wanted people to believe that Muslims are a civilized nation. Muslims are good people. So this were his efforts and the books and organization established by Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. 
Now the services for the education of Indians by Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Sir Syed had realized in the very beginning that only solution for the miseries of Muslims is education. He had realized it in the very beginning. He said education and only education. This was his motto. Then he set a committee for the better diffusion and advancement of learning among the Mohammedans of India in 1870. And one of the tasks of this committee was to know and analyze that why Muslim parents do not send their children in schools and do not want their children to be educated. So to to get the answer for this question, he called an essay writing competition. And uh, then they got the answer and they realized that Muslims do not send their children in the schools influenced by government of the time because the government was of British at the time. So he understood that there is a need to establish an institution that spreads that spreads the knowledge of religion also. He understood that Muslims need knowledge of these uh, modern subjects of the time and the religion also. So this was the reason why Muslim parents were not sending their children to schools sponsored by the government of the time. Then he established his first school in Muradabad in 1859, which was named Gulshan School, and uh, another school was set up in Ghazipur in 1863 that was named Victoria School. And in 1875, the school was transferred to Aligarh, which was uh, named uh, Mohammedan Anglo Oriental School. And in 1877, the school was upgraded to college and it was called Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College. Another very important effort done by Aligarh, uh, Aligarh movement, that is Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, was that Sir Syed Ahmed Khan started All Indian Mohammedan Educational Conference. Now we would study the efforts of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan for the protection of Islam what he did to protect Islam in subcontinent at that time. First of all, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan wrote a book, Jila al Kulu Bazikr al-Mahboob. It was the short biography um, of uh, the life of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Then he wrote Tabin al-Kalam. And then his most important work was khutbat e ahmadiyya It was a book to answer the life of Muhammad by William Moir. I've explained a little bit about it earlier in the previous slides. What was this? Uh, William Muir actually was a person, was an English person who wrote a very questionable book on the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. He questioned the life of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. His book was named The Life of Muhammad. So to answer this book, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan came to forefront and wrote a very comprehensive, a very satisfactory book that is khutbat e ahmadiyya And he answered all the questions of William, William Muir very comprehensively and very satisfactorily. He wrote to his friend Mohsin al-Mulk. This is what Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan wrote to his friend Mohsin al-Mulk and just feel the agony Sir Syed Ahmed Khan was feeling at the time, just feel this agony. He's saying that these days I have feelings of heart burning. I'm going through Muir's book, which he has written about the life of Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It has broken my heart and his begotten views and injustice have previously hurt me. I have resolved as decided earlier that I will write on the life of Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, even if all the money is spent and I become a pauper fit only to beg yet no harm as at least I shall be called up on doomsday as the beggar Ahmad who lost every penny in the name of his 
grandfather. Now this is the love of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan for the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And um, in the beginning, in the background of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, I explained how Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was raised by his mother. This all is the result of the efforts of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan's mother. So this was the effort by Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan for the protection of Islam that he wrote a very comprehensive book in, in retaliation of William Mui's book, The Life of Muhammad. He wrote Khutbah de Ahmadiyya. So now we would study the political services of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. Uh, what Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan did for, uh, in the political aspect for the Muslims of India. Uh, Muslims were in abysmal condition at the time. I've explained it in the previous slides in much detail. James Broadville Lyle wrote to his father in 1858 that if the Muslims could by any means be entirely exterminated, it could be the greatest possible step towards civilizing and Christianizing Hindustan. This was the level of hatred of Britishers against Muslims. So Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan understood the situation. He tried to devise a solution for the problems of Muslims of India at the time. And he advised Muslims to stay away from the politics because he knew that this time Britishers consider Muslims their greatest, their biggest rivals. So he advised Muslims to stay away, to stay aloof from the politics. Because Muslims at the time were uneducated, they did not have any knowledge of politics. And Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan feared that Muslims would end up doing a great loss to themselves if they get involved in politics. So he advised Muslims to stay away from the politics. Because Muslims were uneducated, they were economically oppressed and in the worst condition. So this was the this was the advice of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan for Muslims. Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was a strong advocate of Hindu Muslim unity till 1867, but then a controversy erupted that made Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan realize that Hindus and Muslims are two different, two separate nations. Then he gave two nation theory. Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan opposed Indian National Congress. Why? Because he did not want Muslims to be involved in politics. Because he knew that Muslims do not have any knowledge of politics. Muslims are uneducated. So they, first, they should get education they should get a good status socially, they should be economically strong, then they should involve in politics, then they should come to politics, and then they should present their demands in front of the British government. So this is the reason that Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan opposed Indian National Congress. Another reason behind this um, opposition was that Sir Sayyid believed that in India, there is no one single nation, so we cannot call this party Indian National Congress because this party was um, asserting that uh, this party represents the single nation of India. But Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was of the view that Muslims and Hindus are two separate nations. He gave two nation theory. So this is the reason. Sir Sayyid opposed Indian National Congress. The two reasons behind this opposition were first that Muslims were uneducated at the time. Sir Sayyid did not want Muslims in politics. And the second one was that Muslims were separate nation. So no, there is there was no way that Indian National Congress could present the demands of Muslims through the platform of Indian National Congress. So he opposed Indian National Congress. Moreover, he wrote articles in Aligarh Institute Gazette about no applicability of parliamentary system in India because he knew that parliamentary system in India would be a fiasco for Muslims of India. Muslims were a miserable minority at the time in India. 
He opposed the adoption of Hindi language as an official language of India and supported Urdu language in Hindi Urdu controversy 1867. And it was after this controversy that Ali that Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's view changed and he stopped supporting Hindu Muslim unity and he understood that Muslims and Hindus are two different nations. After that, he gave two nations theory. So this was all the political efforts of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan for the betterment of Muslims of India. Now let's study the results of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan movement, the impacts of his movement. The impacts of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's movement were great and uh, were very deep and good for the future of Muslims. Muslims actually realized the importance of education through the movement of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Muslims started acquiring education and Muslim parents started sending their children for the acquisition of education in schools. Qadazam Muhammad Ali Jinnah said about Aligarh that Aligarh is the arsenal of Muslims of India. Aligarh brought about an intellectual revolution of Muslims in India. After this movement, Muslims stopped armed struggle and they started intellectual struggle. They started acquiring education and then they were educated people of India. Aligarh was a great source of Muslim leadership in India. Aligarh actually became a great source of Muslim leadership in India. Many people who in the future after in the Pakistan movement became the leaders of India were from Aligarh Muslim, uh, Aligarh uh, movement. Mohsin and Mulk and um, Alama Iqbal all these people were friends of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. So they became the leaders for Muslims in Pakistan movement. Then the attitude of British also changed towards Muslims because British realized that Muslims are educated now and they have stopped str armed struggle and they do not pose any severe threat to Britishers anymore. So the attitude of British was also changed towards Muslims. Then Muslims realized that they are a separate nation. Two nation theory was adopted by Muslims and uh, they adopted the Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's opinion that they are a separate nation and they stopped trying to amalgamate themselves with the other nations of the, of the subcontinent and uh, with the Hindus of subcontinent. They realized that they are a separate nation and they started struggle for the independence of Pakistan. This was all the struggle of Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan and his theory, two nation theory that Muslims realized and started Pakistan movement. All India Muslim League was created in the annual meeting of Mohammedan Educational Conference in 1906. So this was another impact of the movement started by Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan that um, his educational conference became the platform, became the reason of the establishment of the creation of the political party that eventually led to the formation of Pakistan the separate, separate uh, country for Muslims. So this was all the impacts and the result of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's movement. This is very important for CSS aspirant and CSS examination. So all the CSS aspirant must memorize whatever I've explained here today. And this is from Sir um, Ahmed Said's book, Trek to Pakistan. Now we would study another educational movement, another educational institutions, that is Darul Uloom Deoban. It was established in 1866 and Molana Qasim Nanosui was the founder of Darul Uloom Deoband. He was a very devoted person and it was a religious institution. While I was researching and while I was studying about this institution, Darul Uloom Deoband, I came across a very interesting story and I would suggest, uh, I would like all the listeners to to read this story in their spare time. What was this story? Actually, we all know that after the War of Independence, Muslims were a victim 
of mistrust of British. British did not trust Muslims because they feared a revolution, a rebellion from Muslims. So they started sending spies in the educational institutes of Muslims because Britishers feared that Muslims might be planning a revolution in these institutions. They believed they feared that these institutions might be a center of their planning. So they started sending spies to spy on Muslims. So the spy who went to the Darul Ulum Deoband revealed very astonishing facts about Muslim students. He revealed that Muslims in Darul Ulum Deoband were studying very hard. They kept their nose to the grindstone and they were studying very complex subjects. They were studying astronomy, they were studying mathematics, they were studying Arabic, they were studying biology and these were very complex topics that they were studying. So he was very astonished and surprised to see that there was no planning of any rebellion, there was no conspiracy planning, they were just studying and they were so devoted and determined for their education. So this was very interesting revealed by this spy who went to Darul Ulum to spy on these Muslim students. This was a very interesting story. I read it when I was preparing this lecture and uh, I would advise all the CSS aspirants to just read this story. It was very interesting. So the background of the society, what was the background of society at the time when this um, institution was established? Uh, actually, religious education was not given to Muslims. Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan established schools that were giving modern western education but religious education was not given to muslims and uh, there was no patronage from government for religious education for religious education of muslims especially there was only western modern education and muslims wanted they needed religious education also and uh, another very big threat to muslims were christian missionaries they were converting Muslims to Christians. So Muslims wanted to escape this persecution. So this was the background of the society, the situation and the problems of Muslims in subcontinent at the time when Malana Qasim Ninothwi founded, established this institution that is Darul Ulum Zeoband. The aims and objectives of Darul Ulum Zeoband are enlisted here. Uh, the aims were to provide Muslims education of Islam, invoking true spirit of Islam in Muslim students because Muslims were steered away from Islam at the time and uh, Muslims were not able to acquire the education of Islam. Uh, propagation and teaching of Islam was one of the aim, avoiding the influence of government and preserving the freedom of thought and knowledge and establishment of Arabic institution. These were all the aims and objectives of Zdarul Ulum Deoband. Now we would study the services of the institution. Uh, the institution was determined to depart knowledge and um, in the beginning there were no books but by the end of 1977 there were more than one black books in the library. Now by this statistics we can make an idea of the success of this institution, how this institution expanded. This institution produced five eight, triple eight teachers, 1164 writers, 1784 muftis, debaters, journalists, auditors, missionaries and physicians also. This was the success and the service of this institution. The writers wrote on Hadith and Quran and foreign students were also educated here. Uh, another institution that was started, that was associated with uh, Darul Ulum Deoband was Darul Ifta. Darul Ifta was started in 1893 and the main aim, the main task of this institution was to give fatwa Provide, it provided religious, social and economic guidance to Muslims. Uh, Darul Ifta also countered Shuddhi movement, a movement started by Hindus uh, and um, 
Hindus were trying to convert Muslims to Hindus, so Darul Ifta also countered this Shuddhi movement. They opened 20 preaching centers and they trained 50 people to preach Islam. This was their service that they, they trained people to preach Islam in India. They worked for Urdu also. Uh, we know that in 1867, Hindu, Hindi Urdu controversy started, so Darul Ifta also supported Urdu. So these were the services of Darul Ulum Deoband. This is a very important educational movement that was started in India. So that's all about Darul Ulum Deoband. Now another very interesting and important educational movement and educational institution, Nadwatul Ulema that was established in 1894. Background of the institute, this was a religious organization. Molana Muhammad Ali Mungeri is the founder of this organization. He decided to create a permanent council of intellectuals and scholars at the time. Let's study the background of the society that led to the formation of this institution. Uh, Muslims were away from Islam at the time and this was the main problem of Muslims of India because they were under British Empire, under British rule, so they were not allowed, they were not free to learn their religion, so they just got steered away from Islam. European civilization was being promoted exuberantly, Christian missionaries were also doing their job very diligently. The Arabic institutions were teaching old syllabus and the Arabic institutions were also at back foot. Uh, rotten subjects were taught in institutes like rhetoric and philosophy and uh, there was no need to teach such kind of uh, subjects but there was a dire need to teach Islam in true manner in institutions and scholars were also busy in petty debates and sectarian conflicts. Sectarian conflict was the main reason behind the establishment of this institute. Let's study the aims of the institution. Fundamental and far-reaching reforms in the syllabi of Islamic studies. This was the main, one of the main aim of this institution. I have explained it in the previous slide that um, Arabic institutions were teaching old slavers, old rhetoric, philosophy. So there was a need of reforms in the syllabus of Islamic studies for the betterment of Muslims, for the revival of Muslims. Uh, so they started preparation of new syllabus and another aim was producing such scholars who, besides being well versed in Quran and Hadith, should also be fully acquainted with the contemporary problems, challenges and the requirements. This was the main aim of the establishment of Nadwatul Ulema because the founder of Nadwatul Ulema wanted such people who with the education and knowledge of Quran and Hadith could solve the contemporary problems. They wanted somebody who is well aware of the contemporary problems and could find solution from Quran and Hadith. So, Another aim was promoting the feeling of unity and brotherhood among Muslims because Muslims were divided at the time. There were sectarian conflicts, there were rift in Muslims and um, founder of Nadratul Ulama wanted to promote the feeling of unity and brotherhood among Muslims. Another aim was promoting Islamic teachings. So these were the aims of the institution of Nadratul Ulama that was established in 1894. Now we would study the services of Nadwatul Ulema. Nadwatul Ulema brought out a magazine named Al Nadwa in 1904, and the associates of Al Nadwa came out to be renowned writers of India. Syed Suleiman Nadwi, uh, the person called Ustadul Kul, and Abul Kalam Azad were from this institute, and Syed Suleiman Nadwi is a very famous person. Um, he wrote Siratun Nabwi. And he was from this institute, uh, Nadwatul Ulama. And uh, Nadwatul Ulama also answered questions raised against the history of Islam. So it tried to prevent people from maligning the history of Islam. Nadwatul Ulama also worked to strengthen the ties with rest of the Muslim world. 
this was an effort to strengthen the muslims of india they tried to make connections with the rest of the muslim world so that the muslims of india are strong and strengthened and uh, they are, they want they tried to make friendly relations with the rest of the muslim world famous personalities like mufti amin al husaini of palestine muhammad ali alba pasha of egypt sheikh abul wahab and sheikh ibrahimi visited india they were in association with this uh, nadwatul ulama institute and uh, nadwatul ulama also worked to counter shuddhi movement so these were the services of nadwatul ulama now we would study another educational institution educational movement that is anjuman e himayat e islam the background of this movement it started in punjab the organization was founded in a mosque called masjid bakan it was founded by qazi khalifa hamiduddin and uh, the background of the society actually punjab reached the extreme of illiteracy after the fall of mughal empire there was no religious education and christian missionaries and hindus were converting muslims a very sad incident took place in 1883 when a sayyida lady converted to christianity with her three children but afterwards she reverted back to islam but this was an eye opening incident in the subcontinent that made muslims realize that now there is a need of establishment of an institutions like anjuman e himayat e islam so they established this in 1884 now we would study the aims and objectives of anjuman e himayat e islam uh, there were three aims uh, it was providing the general as well as religious education protection and propagation of islamic values responding to hostile propaganda such as the propaganda of christian missionaries and the shuddhi movement started by hindus to convert muslims from islam to hinduism so what were the services of anjuman e himayat e islam anjuman e himayat e islam actually worked for the education of female it founded many schools and orphanages for muslim girls and in 1892 it founded islamia college lahore the students of this institutions made great contribution in pakistan movement they established punjab muslim student federation it established darul aman and darul shafqat for orphans because the christians and hindus were converting muslim orphans to their religion so they established darul aman and darul shafqat to prevent the conversion of muslims to these religions monthly journal named himayat e islam was started in 1885 by this institution and many books on islamic history and the life of muhammad were published by the people of anjuman e himayat e islam so these were the services of anjuman e himayat e islam and um, by studying these services we can make an idea that the main aim of this institution was to protect muslims and islam in subcontinent because islam and muslims faced great threat at the hands of british and hindus so the main aim was protection of islam and muslims so that's all about anjuman e himayat e islam now we would move forward and see what do we have more now the last educational institution that we're going to study today is islamia college peshawar this college was established in 1913 and it is still in existence in peshawar of pakistan a uh, background of this institution the institution was founded in 1930 by sir sahib zada abdul qayyum who was called the sir sayed of the frontier the services of this institutions are also worthy of discussion this institute contributed in pakistan movement actually students of this institute established student federation that worked for pakistan movement and um, khadazam also visited this institute in 1939 1945 and 1948 also he acknowledged the outstanding role of his students in the movement so 
That's all about the educational movements started by Muslim leaders in subcontinent for the prosperity, for the betterment of Muslims of subcontinent. And this is the end of this lecture. We have discussed this topic in much detail. And um, I assure all the CSS aspirants that uh, the material that I've given here today is enough for this particular topic. The source of this material, this topic was Trek to Pakistan by Ahmed Saeed and um, we are done with this topic now. So uh, this is the end of this topic, this lecture. So Allah Hafiz till the next lecture and uh, study hard and thank you so much for listening.